Scott, so yeah, it's just a fantastic individual, Hall of Fame type of person. I'd have loved to play football for this man. Got one shot. Thank you, Jim. Uh, good evening. Uh, when you are asked to speak on behalf of a person who's receiving an award, you usually list their stats, their numbers, their accomplishments, their awards, whatever made them worthy of receiving that award. When the recipient of the award and the presenter are both in their 80s, we don't have any stats or numbers. <laughs> or as my niece Wanda Goose said, we simply have stories. <laughs> Jerry's story goes something like this. In the early 1950s, most high school football teams were using the straight tee, the wing tee, or some version of it as their offensive formation. The success or failure of this formation was based on deception. Each offensive play involved at least one, two, and sometimes three fakes with the football. This was the responsibility of the quarterback. Which team's quarterback was the most adept at hiding the football usually won. The seasons of 1954, 1955, and 1966, Jerry Winkler was our quarterback. He had a natural advantage. He was small, five foot three. His senior season, his playing weight was listed as 117 pounds soaking wet. He could be he could be high behind his offensive line. Jerry was a magician with the football. He carried out every fake diligently, faking the ball to the a back, giving the ball to the runner, and usually a third hand fake. <coughs> Jerry was extremely adept at concealing the football from the opponent's team. Because of his skill as a quarterback, Jerry made those around him much better players. During his years as quarterback in the program, the record speaks for itself. 1954, we were 7-2. 1955, we were 7-1, undefeated. 1956, we were 8-1. For a total of 23 victories, three losses, and one tie. Now there's something in those three seasons that is kind of interesting. In 1954, we won the last four games of the season. And of course, in 1955, we were undefeated. In 1956, we won our first five games, which totals St. Vincent had at that time a 17-game winning streak. And I don't exactly know where that stands now, Jim, but I think it would probably rank with, with the best. We won the Old Catholic League in 1955, uh, excuse me, 55-56, and the Catholic League is at the St. Vincent's Valley, Belleville Cathedral, Alton Marquette, Eugene Coyle, which is now Vianney, and Chaminade. Jerry would be unusual in today's high school athletic program. In an era of specialization by our high school athletes, concentrating on one sport all year long, he was the quarterback in football, was a starting point guard for two years as a junior and a senior on the basketball team. He was a four-year starter on the baseball team as a shortstop and a pitcher. He won the Catholic League two out of three years, and Jerry, Jerry was truly a three-sport athlete. Interesting, in 1944, Betty Roth Winkler, 
his wife, Jerry Winkler, and I started kindergarten together. 1953, we started high school at the new St. Vincent. In 1957, we were the first graduating class to go through all four years at the new school. And I just thank Jim for setting up the opportunity for a visit to the, to the school today. Thank you, Jim. We were co-captains of the football team together. We were in each other's wedding. Betty and Jerry are godparents to our son, Kevin. And although we live in different states, we visit quite often frequently. And so 79, 79 years later, we're still friends, we're still together, and it's my pleasure to welcome Jerry Winkley into the St. Vincent's Hall of Fame. fed me very well. <laughs> anyway, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. I want to thank all the folks involved in my nomination, especially Jim, and a dear, dear friend and an ex-neighbor, Russell Paulus. We grew up on Water Street in Perryville, which probably produced more good athletes than any other single street in the town. <laughs> Paulus family alone pr provided, I don't know, se seven or eight, Russell. Eight? Eight boys? Can't, can't you count? <laughs> can't you count? <laughs> well, anyway, one of his brothers was Kenny, the coach, formerly a coach here. And he's five years older than Glenn and I and my wife, Betty. And uh, we became very close friends because we lived three, uh, three houses apart on North Water Street. And our street was always full of ball games, whether it's Indian ball, court ball, or whatever. And there was never a day when the weather was good enough that there wasn't some part of his family and me and some other folks in the area out in the street playing Indian ball or whatever. So, <clears throat> before I go any further, I want to take just a few seconds to introduce some very dear people to me, starting with my wife, Betty. Home Betty. Home Betty. Home Betty. Home Betty. Home Betty. My uh, youngest brother, Mark, his wife, Ann. <laughs> my next brother, Stanley, by himself. Sonny Michael from Florida, and the daughter Kim from St. Louis. And we have one other one. Betty has a nephew, Jeff Nije, who's sitting over there with her. Thanks for coming, guys, and as well, thanks to all of you for coming, too. Uh, I want to again thank you guys on your committee for having, you know, reviewed my record and all that and selected me as an honoree. I'm very grateful for that. My years at St. Vincent's were particularly good and I was the beneficiary of having played under Max Hamilton, who as far as I'm concerned is as good as there is in the game. He was, he was a mentor to the nth degree. He knew how to get the best out of anyone who served under him, whether it was basketball, baseball, football, and uh, I'm most grateful to him for having aided me in my direction and my progress to an adult. Uh, certainly I'm grateful to, to Glenn here for his words. We've been dear friends for many years and uh, we'll go to the grave that way too. Uh, and our, our two boys who are here tonight 
or I think a day apart in birthdays. Uh, born 1966. So, uh, our son went to school in St. Louis, and their son went to Belleville, where, where Glenn had a great career. Uh, several state championships, a high school Hall of Fame uh, member there in the state of Illinois, well known throughout the state for all his uh, uh, his his accomplishments. So uh, I tried my best to uh, find the school colors in my wardrobe. <laughs> this is good as I can do. It's not the bright blue and the bright yellow, but I tried. I tried. And of course, I'm on fixed income, so I can't, <laughs> I can't afford to do like the ladies used to do, go out and shop at the sales all the time. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to all of the other honorees tonight. Some great people. Uh, I wish I would have been bigger. <laughs> Maybe have, uh, uh, you know, had, had become the beneficiary of some of the the awards and, and achievements that they had, uh, as a, a point of interest, I guess. When I was a freshman, I weighed 102 pounds, and they had trouble finding pants small enough to fit. What they did, they had to wrap tape around the thigh. It didn't, it didn't take much tape. <laughs> It would, have, it would have been a real thrill to have had uniforms like you all have today or like you had the last 10 or 15 years. That's pretty cool, you know, the tight pants and all that. Uh, I, almost, I almost had to wear suspenders to keep my <laughs> great athletes, uh, one who probably was as good, if not the best running back that St. Vincent's ever had. The fellow's name was Ken Sissel. He was about 6'2", weighed about 210 pounds. He could do a 10-second, 100-yard dash. And uh, never forget the, the games when anybody got his way, even if they were his size, they were bound to be knocked over because it was like the to the young fellow who was introduced a while ago about uh, uh, his running abilities, ran over a, a guard that didn't get blocked or whatever. Well, Ken was the kind of guy who could run over anybody, large or small. And he was as fine a running back as, as certainly as I played with. Uh, and of course, you had to have good blockers, good linemen in front of you uh, in order to uh, you know, produce those results. And all of those folks were very instrumental in allowing me and getting me to the point of having a three-year record like we did. And without them, you know, I'm a nobody, except maybe five feet zero and 100 pounds. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, thank you very much, uh, Russell and, and your committee, Jim, uh, for uh, nominating me. And, and allowed me to become a member of the Hall of Fame. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege, and I'm most grateful, happy to have been part of St. Vincent High School. Congratulations to all of you other members. Jerry Winkler, class of 1956. Three-year starter quarterback, record of 22, three and one. Quarterback of the undefeated team in 1955. Baseball, four-year letter. Captain of the, of the team his senior year. Won the Catholic Conference in baseball two years. Basketball varsity two years. He was sportsman of the year, 1956. Jerry Winkler, congratulations. <laughs>